you can hear my voice please type here yes you can yeah thank you very much febrina aulia from bukit tinggi sumatera barat okay um anyone okay um so i would assume that people all people already registered here can hear my voice clearly if your if the voice is not clear um, is not here heard clearly um, uh, most likely you have a problem with your connection so i would suggest you to um, test your um, test your system make sure that it meets the minimum standard of a webinar okay let me give you the url Okay, thanks a while. Yeah, but thanks for saying system testing. Okay. Yeah, here it is. Okay, uh that's that's the URL to test your system. Uh, make sure um all your requirements would be uh, I mean your system, your specifications already meet the requirement for this webinar. Uh, okay, so um, assuming that everybody's from from Indonesia, so I'll speak Indonesian. Okay, uh, the agenda today uh, will be uh, introduction, wireless. Uh, we'll be talking about the basic of wireless and then session and demo and if we have time we can do question and answer okay what is TLC kita adalah Gadal Kusakawala based in Bandung area kita training IP consulting yeah, certified training partner consultant dan distributor jadi kalau mau cari uh, consultasi mikrotik bisa ke kita uh, Thank you for using any meeting. Dan distributor. Dan kalau perlu barang mikrotik juga bisa ke kita. Saya sendiri adalah uh, Linux user. Uh, nama saya Ahmad Patiansia. Based di Bandung. Yeah. Uh, Linux user sejak tahun 1999. Yeah. Uh, pengguna mikrotik tahun 2007. Uh, certified trainer. Ya yeah, untuk uh, semua trainer mikrotik. Uh, konsultan sebelumnya pernah bekerja sebagai telco engineer, sysadmin, programmer dan lecturer. Uh, sekarang silakan kenalkan uh, diri anda sendiri, nama dari mana, pengalaman mikrotiknya apa aja. Silakan di check box ini. Halo. Oh ya, yeah. uh, saya ingin tahu pakai koneksi apa sekalian juga ya. Nah, biasanya orang register ke sini, biasanya pakai telkom ya. Ada Speedy, ada ini home, ada macam-macam. Oke, okay, silakan introduce yourself, nggak usah malu ya. Silakan Pak. Lagi yang baru-baru, silakan. Ini ada yang ngetik. <laughs> ayo, ayo. Halo. Uh, apa bisa minta tolong ininya enggak uh, apa uh, tar, uh, infokan kemari pakai koneksi apa uh, ke webinar ini ya jadi lumayan perlu tahu juga sih jadi pakai apa biasanya oke okay, silakan pak ada chatting di sini Febrina SMK oke okay. koneksi menggunakan speedy oke okay, terima kasih Berarti speedy bagus ya, oke. Okay. 
Jadi kalau ada orang lain, maksudnya begini, kenapa saya tanya? Uh, kalau ada orang lain tanya, uh, oh Pak Tuspedi bisa nggak ikutan webinar? Saya jawab bisa ya, karena di sini saya juga punya bukti bahwa oh orang ini pakai speedy dan bisa mengikuti webinar dengan baik. Oke, okay, yang lain bagaimana? Silakan. Ini Febrina SMK, berarti sudah pengalaman pakai mikrotik ya di SMK. Ini saya asumsikan uh, sudah sudah mengerti mikrotik ya. Biasanya SMK itu SMK jurusannya jaringan ya biasanya. Uh, sudah mengerti uh, mikrotik. Oke, ada lagi yang lain? Terima kasih Febrina ya. Uh, berani <laughs> memperkenalkan dirinya. Bagaimana yang lain? Ini Febrina aja bisa. Yang lain gimana ini? Oke, okay, uh, selanjutnya dari Handoyo dari Malang. Oke. Okay. Koneksi 4G smart. Oke. Okay. Gak apa-apa Pak ya, gak usah dipakein bintang-bintang, <laughs> sebut aja mereknya. <laughs> gak apa-apa kok. Oke, okay, uh, smart bagus ya. Ini bagaimana nih, uh, Pak Deri, uh, pengalaman mikrotiknya baru atau baru kenal atau udah, oh saya udah pakai mikrotik 10 tahun gitu. Oh ya udah. Jadi, uh, apa, ikut webinar di sini uh, paling cuma ngasih laterahmi aja. <laughs> Oke, okay, sudah? Ayo dong, kenalan dong. Kan di sini kita... Apa? Uh, kita... Ini uh, wadah-wadah silaturahmi kan. Jadi bisa saling kenal. Ini. Ya, ada lagi nggak nih? Oke, okay, Eko Koneksi Skyline. Oke. Okay. Keren promo. Oh, nggak perlu ya. Pengalaman mikrotik kurang lebih satu tahun. Oh, nggak perlu. Jadi ini bukan promo, bukan pamer-pamer gitu ya. Tujuan saya untuk mengetahui background Anda adalah uh, agar saya dalam uh, presentasi ya tahu gitu ya. Kalau misalkan orang yang baru, uh, ya kita bahas yang basic-basic. Gitu. Kalau di sini orangnya sudah, oh, sudah pengalaman pakai mikrotik, ngapain kita bahas basicnya. Kan, gitu. Oke, selanjutnya terima kasih ada dari Oh Michael, oh ya, yeah. Michael saya tahu ya, ini dari SMK, dari anu ya apa, Jakarta ya kalau nggak salah ya. Oh oke, okay. I got one here. Ternyata satu orang ini dari asing. Oh Depok ya yeah, ya yeah, maaf maaf. Ya yeah, ini uh, sinergi telekom, iya. Yeah. Okay, so uh, it means that I have to switch to English, I'm afraid, yeah. Um, okay, guys, so uh, I have, uh, we have one guest here, so not everyone here from Indonesia, so uh, one person is from, from overseas, okay, thank you very much. So where are you from? Can you please start doing that here? here? Okay, better in English. Okay, no worries. So you are connected from Catalonia. Where is Catalonia? Is it in somewhere in, in Asia or uh, I'm not sure in in, in uh, Can you please uh, tell me a little bit yourself? Oh, Southern Europe. Oh, okay, Southern Europe. Maybe Italia or oh Spain. Okay. Well, guys, so we have a guest here from Spain. Thank you very much. It's very far away from Indonesia. Um, okay, let's get started. Thank you very much for your introduction. So I would assume uh, you already know Microtik uh, for uh, several months or maybe even years. So for those who are new to Microtik, uh, Microtik is the name of a company, a brand, a program, or then the headquarters in Enrique Lafia. Uh, thanks. Uh, okay, thanks also uh, for attending this webinar, yeah, Mr. I don't know your name, sir. Uh, Telecom, uh, but I'm not sure there is a person named with that one. <laughs> okay, uh, next, what are Microtik products? Oh, so your name is Ismail. Thank you very much. So, Microtik products, uh, 
actually Microtik only produces uh, two products. One is router OS. Uh, the other is router board. Router OS is the operating systems based on Linux. So you can think router OS is like Linux distributions, you know, like Ubuntu, um, um, uh, what else? Uh, CentOS, uh, Red Hat, uh, Mandrive, uh, Mandriva, Slackware, any other Unix, uh, Linux distributions. Yes. They do Linux distribution, but that distribution is specialized for networking. So you will not be able to like uh, doing a uh, package management like, you know, apt get, uh, uh, what else, uh, yum, um, yeah, any other things um, that relates to the package management. You cannot install Apache, you cannot install MySQL there. So it's purely for networking. So the uh, functions that they embed to the distribution is functions like DHCP, like your firewall, you know, the IP tables, the uh, web proxy, and then, uh, yeah, other things like that. Uh, the second product from Microtech is the router board. So the board here is the hardware. Why do they produce this? Why do they produce the hardware? Because uh, if you install router OS in the PC, it will take uh, a lot of uh, resources, take up space, they can take up uh, more power, and then it's not really, um, it's not really mobile and flexible. You cannot, if you install in a, in a PC, you know, PC is a quite big. If you bring that PC with you, you travel somewhere, um, it's not that nice, yeah? Take up very much space and that if you have a tower, you're gonna put that uh, uh, box uh, on top of the tower, yeah. So that's why they think, okay, so it's time for us, Microtech, it's time for Microtech now to uh, to make a router board. Here's the hardware, okay? So for the hardware itself, you can see in the routerboard.com website. So what the router OS can do? Well, a lot of things. Yeah, of course, the, the things that are related to the network. <laughs> yeah, what else? So you just go to microtech.com. There you can see the files. What is router OS? So inside uh, you can see the uh, feature, what the router OS can do. Also, you can download their product catalog. There you can see uh, there are lots of uh, um, range of products provide, uh, produced by uh, Microtech. Uh, if there are new products that is not yet written in the product catalog, usually they uh, they release a newsletter. Okay, so all of them you can download from Microtech.com. About the training itself, so first you have to attend the MTCNA, after that the MTCRE, and NA means, MTC means Microtech Certificate, Certified, NA means Network Admin, RE means uh, Router Engineer, so, so you take the um, course and certification based on your requirement. If your network is, where is the new one? What do you mean the new one? Oh, the IPv6, yeah, I forgot to put them here. <laughs> Thank you very much for pointing that out. Uh, yeah, next webinar, yeah, next webinar, I will put them here. So after you finish the MTCNA and then ask yourself, um, is your network big enough? So you have uh, more than one routers and then you can attend MTCRE if you have lots of uh, wireless uh, net, uh, wireless uh, um, network, yeah, and then you can attend MTC WE, WE means wireless engineer. If you want to set up a uh, traffic control for your organization with a uh, more sophisticated way, and then you can attend MTC TCE, traffic control engineer. So if you want to apply hotspots, for example, the one that is applied in the airport, so that if everybody wants, to, you know, um, in every airport or terminals, usually the, um, the 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 owner of the place provide a free internet. 
you don't have to put password to get in but when you want to um, um, when you want to connect to the internet you have to the kind of registrations and then you have to click connect in order to get internet for let's say 30 minutes so that one is a hotspot features uh, that feature can be done using a hotspot and then uh, uh, that topic, hotspot topic, is discussed in uh, in MTC UME uh, um, Microtech uh, Certified User Manager Engineer. Also the VPNs uh, and then the bridging between VPNs. Uh, you can uh, um, you can see it there. So if your network is getting bigger and bigger, and then uh, so it's time for you to apply for an AS number, autonomous system number, ASN. It means that, uh, yeah, the training that's suitable to that situation is MTCINE. So all certificates here is last for three years. Uh, if they're already expired, and then you can just renew. And then if you have two certificates, MTCINE and MTCRE, you just renew the last layer. Last one, All right? So, uh, if you have any question, just type in the chat box here, and then I will um, discuss. So, is there anybody recording the the session? So, last webinar we had one person um, recording the uh, webinar. Thank you very much. But this time, I don't know. Uh, who is who is recording the uh, where were the last time? Yeah, but uh, thank you very much anyway. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, wireless topic now. So, what is uh, Wi Fi? Uh, oh, wi Fi is actually it's a one kind of uh, wireless communication. So, uh, it's defined by IEEE. And then the number is 802.11x. So x could be a, b, c, d, oh no, a, b, g, n, and then many others um, standard for the uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, the way the way Wi-Fi operates, uh, you can uh, define by um, can be uh, infrastructure mode or ad hoc mode. So infrastructure, as the name suggests, uh, it requires SS point, AP. Uh, if it is ad hoc, uh, you don't have to have uh, the uh, access point. So you just connect from one client to the other client directly. What it defines, what, uh, what I, IEEE defines is the standard in layer two as well as the layer one. So layer one is the physical. So they define how the modulations apply in the wireless connection, and also uh, what kind of frame uh, does the uh, uh, client or uh, IP is sending. Um, what about the airframe and stuff like that? So those uh, specification is written in the standard defined by Article E. So all manufacturers um, receive the standard and then uh, uh, write those standards uh, into their firmware of the product, including Microtech. OK, about the standard itself, uh, you can see here in the table, uh, you have uh, A, B, G, N, and then A, C. You see, you can also see the release uh, year when it was released. And then we also have a maximum data rate and then there on which band is it operating so it is operating on 2.4 gigahertz or 5. Uh, the latest technology for wi-fi which was already released was 802.11 ac it can go up to 400 megabit per second but uh, the <laughs> the band that is using is 5 gigahertz so meaning that uh, for all devices, uh, you cannot get it because all devices most likely only support up to 11N. So 
this is how infrastructure mode looks like. So uh, you've got an access point, and then this the client. So we we in wireless we can we don't say client. We call them station. So this station connects to access point, and then so the way it connects is by connecting to um, uh, to an uh, uh, surface that that is identified by BSSID or SSID. So this coverage um, is called basic service set. And then this BSSID is identified by BSSID. Usually it's uh, taken from the APIs MAC address. Uh, yeah, well, because remembering the MAC address is quite difficult, so that's why the SSID Usually, um, uh, it's written in the human readable way. <laughs> okay. Okay. One question here from Bayu Guntur. Internet di sini semua. I don't know what you mean, that guys. So, uh, if you can write the question in, in English or, or Indonesian, and then uh, I will be happy to answer that. So, the next question is: Can we extend the coverage uh, guys uh, um, this checkbox um, if you have any questions and then you can put them in the checkbox okay uh, if you just want to say hi or testing and then uh, uh, anything else I mean you can do it uh, somewhere else not here okay because yeah uh, I just want to see uh, the, the 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 you know the, the the question that relates to the topic. Okay, I have one question here. I want to ask about the performance of RB CAP to end performance. How many clients? Uh, how many clients can it handle? Okay, so RB means uh, router board. CAP means a sailing access point. 2N means it operates on 2 gigahertz, and N means it supports uh, 11N uh, uh, technology. Well, uh, well, uh, I have I have a CAP, but it was the old CAP. It doesn't have any uh, dual dual uh, dual an, 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 a dual chain. So I think it's still single chain, the, the CAP. It's a little bit which is quite cheap. Uh, and then if you ask me about how how many how many users can that CAP handle, it I, I mean if if the stations only um, only uh, um, you know just connect to the internet and then just do a little thing, well. It can handle more than 100, you know, just for connecting. Okay, it's not doing anything. But when people are browsing and browsing, and then, uh, well, uh, that depends. <laughs> okay, that depends. So uh, let's say if they they use uh, uh, a 300 Mbps, and then uh, divided by Okay, if you have 10 people and then 300 Mbps divided by 3, no, it's not like that. It's not, it's not the way it works. Okay, so if you have a, okay, maybe we can, we can uh, discuss this one later. Okay, and we talk about how the, the wireless is, uh, this is working, okay, because wireless is half duplex. So, uh, talking about the bandwidth, it's not similar when you have a wired connection. Okay. So uh, for Michael, okay, please uh, keep your uh, questions. We will discuss uh, that question later. Okay, so at least here, I'm going to, um, you know, uh, uh, explain what the uh, wireless is. Uh, make sure everybody can follow. Uh, is is tuning in the same frequency? You know. Okay, so uh, okay, where were we? <laughs> so uh, we want to extend the coverage, okay? Because previously, in the previous slide here, 
uh, if you just use one access point, it's not enough. Okay. Yeah, because this signal cannot be cannot cannot tra travel far away. So we need to extend the coverage. Well, one way to do that is called uh, ESS. Yeah, so the extension is called uh, the, 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 the service um, that will be provided uh, that is already extended. It's called ESS, so extended service set, identified by ESS ID or SS ID. So in this case, a user can roam from one AP to the other AP. So this system is called DS, distributed system. So it's going to be like this. Okay, so you have one access point here, the other access point there. Uh, user can travel from access point one to access point two. Okay, it's as simple as that. So between these two access points, we have uh, a backbone network, usually wire. So um, access point one connected to uh, switch a switch and then access point two connected to the same switch okay so basically it's just layer two connection between them well what if the backbone is wireless uh, i don't have any luxury to roll out the cables and then connect those access points well this system is called wds a wireless distributed system so previously as you can see here uh, this is one system, AP1, AP2, and then the total number of users that can be handled by the system is, is just sum up of those uh, access points. So if access point 1 can, um, can serve uh, 20 access points, access point 2, 20 access points, you just sum all of them, so total number of users uh, that can be handled by this uh, um, system is 20 plus 20 equals to 40. Okay, uh, but this one is different. Uh, so we have uh, three access points here. So if we use with WDS system, so all of them will be considered as one access point. So total number of uh, user that can be served by this system, this WS system, is just 20. Well, so it's bad performance then. Yes, it is. It's bad. It's not good. But the benefit of the WDS here is you have a wider coverage. Okay. So, for example, you have an earthquake and then the journalist wants to send uh, news to their agency I think this one could be one of the solutions. About the channel itself, so a wireless channel is going to be like this. So you have channel 1, 2, 3, up to 14. Well, that depends on your country. Uh, for example, in the United States, um, the, ch the maximum channel is uh, 11. In Indonesia, uh, our channel is up to 13. So if if I set my access point to channel 13 and then I have one guest which is from America, they cannot join to my network because I'm, I'm running on channel 13 and then maximum channel that he can join is channel 11. So no, but, uh, no luck at all. Okay, so yeah, that's that's it. Uh, one one thing that you need to know about the channel here. So when you see the cyan block here, the uh, light blue uh, block here with the numbers in the middle. So below the number is the central frequency. So for channel one, it's twenty four twelve. And then the way it's operating, it's not only operating on 24.12 like a FM radio. It starts from 24.01 to 24.23. So the, the the gap between them is the, it's, we call it channel width. Okay, so it's the 
It's the difference between upper frequency and then lower frequency. What about 5 gigahertz channel? Same thing. Okay, it depends on the uh, regulation on each country. Uh, Indonesia, we just allowed to use, uh, we are just allowed to use uh, 5.7 gigahertz. Uh, lower than that is not allowed. Okay, other country have different rules. So here, the brown one is the, um, the normal channel. And then the yellow one, we call it turbo channel. It's a combination of both channel, uh, both normal channels. So uh, we have, if we have a higher or a wider uh, data channel, um, and then the data rate could be will be higher. But as the consequence, you cannot. I mean, uh, all you cannot run access point that is very close to them because it will give them interference. Okay, the next thing is about the full duplex and half duplex. So as the nature, because you're using one channel or one frequency for all user, also being used by the access point. So when one station sending or access point is sending the data, others must wait. And then we don't have any time slot here. And then this, um, method is called CSMACA. And so Wi-Fi is half duplex. So CSMACA, so a collision a carrier sense multiple access. So it's a one technique for uh, multiplexing the um, the media. So uh, so multiplexing means you're just using one media. Uh, being used by more than one user. That's the meaning of multiplexing. If you are working in telecommunications, I'm really sure you know what this kind of uh, multiplexing, okay? So uh, CSMA, uh, CSMA, that's the, that's the, the uh, technology, that's the algorithm, okay? So a uh, carrier and multiple access. So uh, many users can uh, use the same, uh, uh, media, uh, but uh, we have a CA, yeah, collision avoidance. It means that all parties, all users uh, that is involved in the wireless network should be able to hear each other. Why? Because if somebody is sending, other must wait, okay? And then as a default from 802.11, there is no time slot for each station because it's not written in the standard, okay? That's the everybody should know. If you're using GSM, GSM has a time slot, okay? I was working as telco before, so I know. Okay, the word CSM is CA itself, so carries and multiple access, the collision avoidance. So every station in the network should be able to hear each other. If not, and then we're going to have a hidden node problem. The terminologies here we have station and AP. So in wired network we have this kind of like a client and server. The topology we have a PTP point to point antenna by using single antenna. Uh, we have PTP dual antenna. So for example, if you are um, um, using um, N stream with dual antenna, uh, Microtech supports that. Um, so that could be uh, one example, yeah, uh, PTP to our antenna. So uh, by uh, doing this one, uh, you can use one antenna as uh, TX for transmit, and then the other uh, antenna is for RX for receive. So by doing this one, the point to point uh, could be uh, full duplex communications. So if you're using ubiquity, Okay, so this is a microtech webinar now, but I'm talking ubiquity. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Should be okay then. Uh, yeah, because we do ubiquity also. So we do a consultation about microtech, ubiquity, and then Linux system, and also the radius. Our radius is also good. Okay, back to the topic here. Uh, if you use air fiber, so that is uh, dual antenna as well. 
So one frequency for TX, the other frequency for MX. And for PTMP, uh, so it means that uh, one, one, uh, one uh, access point will be accessed by many stations like uh, campus, office, airport, cafe, and then also we have WDS. Now it's optimization. So optimization by um, by definition is to make system as perfect as possible. Uh, to to push the um, to push the the, the 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 capability of equipments to its limit. Yeah. So for example, the limit of wireless system, let's say 100 megabit per second. We want our data rates as close as possible to the limit. Okay, so uh, what can we expect from optimizations? Is stable connections. Okay, we can achieve 100 megabit per second. Yeah, okay, good, very well. But uh, it's not stable. Sometimes it's 100, sometimes it's 112, sometimes 110. But after that, it's dropped to 50 megabit per second. Now, so it's not stable connection. So, <laughs> what can you expect from optimizations like that? So, optimizations must must have results of stable connection. Yeah. So we can achieve the limit of technology. Okay. But one thing you should remember is wireless is dynamic, and it's a continuous process. Sometimes. Okay, I um, before I came to the UK, I had a project uh, for optimizing a wireless network in a factory. Okay, and then I talked to them that okay, so this is the first phase. Uh, maybe uh, it uh, we after we have done the optimization and then the network, the wireless network was good, but it doesn't guarantee that it will last forever. Okay. Because uh, wireless is dynamic. In the future, maybe there will be a new source of interference. Uh, um, uh, what is it? Uh, the the there is an incompatibility of the devices, and then others. Okay, so uh, once again, uh, optimization is a continuous process. Okay, so, um, for the demo here, I don't have any. I don't have. Uh, okay, let me check here. Well, I, 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 I don't have any micro tech that we can play with. But here I have uh, some screenshot that we can use to, 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 to um, yeah, you know, to get some idea about uh, what kind of optimization we can achieve with micro tech. So uh, I, I divided the presentations with, uh, with, with two uh, big parts. First is the CP optimization, so the station, and then access point optimization. Is. So for CP, the goal is to make sure that CP can establish a connection to AP, okay? Because oh, we are using infrastructure modes, and then that infrastructure mode consists of two parts, the access point and then the station. So make sure that on the CP side we are able to connect to the AP. So tools that we are using could be scanner, um, alignment, okay, or quick set. So this quick set is, is very good for alignment. So whenever you are pointing out the uh, station, so and then the the the, the stig signal strength can be uh, seen uh, directly on the uh, web interface, so it is very nice feature. So this is uh, <coughs> sorry. So uh, the slide here shows the scanner. Okay, so you can scan the access point. So the purpose for scanner tool is to check the signal from the access point or yeah the access point so as you can see here we have uh, address ssid and then channel and then signal strength we have noises we have signal 
the noise ratio, uh, radio name, and then the uh, router version. Okay, we have alignment here. So that is the feature for alignment. And then we can use beep with that. Okay, so whenever we are pointing and then when the signal is good, and then the beeper will be sounding uh, faster. It's also a nice feature. And we can set up, okay, so if you are reach maximum of this one, and then, set, yeah, uh, the beep, beeper will, will, will sounding uh, faster. Okay, so next is the quick set, as you can see. Uh, in the middle, so we have a signal strength. Okay, so that is the graph, um, live graph, where, where it displays the strength of the signal received by the CPU. So you can use that to connect to the access point. Okay, now is the AP. So the goal is uh, when we do, when we optimize the AP, is so we want to make sure that the AP provide optimal service to CPE, okay? So how does that? How does the AP do that? Well, um, there are several tools that we can use for this frequency usage, the snooper or spectrum analyzer. Uh, here's the frequency usage. Um, okay, so this one is how to make Microtik as an access point, so you just go to quick set and then there you can pick the uh, home AP. So it means that you are turning the Microtik device to be an access point. Simple as that. Okay, uh, the next is uh, frequency usage. So, one, so as I said before, uh, the um, the uh, correct frequency will really have an impact, a good impact of 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 of, uh, of a client connection. So you have to make sure that uh, the frequency that you are using uh, is not interfering with others, or other interfere uh, your your uh, your uh, your access point. Okay, so you have to make sure that. You are the only one that's using the frequency in that area, which is well for outdoor. And then if you're using 2.4 gigahertz, it's uh, practically it's impossible because everybody is is having the same chance to use the same frequency, right? Yeah, but this is for indoor, and I will assume that inside the building, you have your own, um, you know. Um, you have your own uh, permission or uh, yeah uh, rights to, to to control the wireless uh, signal inside the building usually indoors inside the building right okay and then snooper snooper means checking the uh, the frequency here the uh, the, the frequency um, uh, that is it. Uh, um, so, uh, as you can see, this is a snooper uh, screenshot. Uh, on that, you can see tables. Uh, on the left, we have frequency, band, address, uh, SSID, signal strength, uh, uh, percent of frequency usage, frequency traffic, the bandwidth, and so on. So, here you can see the utilizations of that. Uh, of, of that uh, particular frequency. Uh, so if that frequency is, is used by other people a lot, and then the, the signal strength is, is, is quite high, then do not pick that frequency, okay? Um, pick another frequency far away from that. Otherwise, it's gonna be, um, uh, you're going to have uh, interference with them. Another tools which you can use is spectrum analyzer. So here you have to um, you need to use uh, uh, the dude for opening this uh, interface. Okay. Uh, it's not 
is not available in the Winbox no? uh, Unity Institute of Spectrum Analyzer. It will display at a certain amount of time. Uh, this frequency is being used. So, for example, in here, uh, as you can see, there is uh, there was an activity in 2.4 GHz uh, something. Okay, 242 something. So I would assume that this one is uh, yes, yeah, a channel one. I think yeah, channel one. Channel one is being used, and then as you can see the channel width. It's different. No? And then on top of it, then before that, uh, it is uh, is uh, wider. Okay, so that means uh, that frequency is occupied. Somebody is sending the data that frequency. So that means do not use that frequency because they will interfere your communication, which is not good. And then you can see in the registration table. Okay, the one that can see many all users is the access point. So in the access point, you go to the uh, registration table and then check what is the signal of each kind. As you see in this example here, uh, from the uh, station point of view, the signal strength from the access point is uh, minus 24 and 21. Okay, so TX is uh, minus 24, RX is minus 21, which is very, very good signal here. So that if the signal is good, the TX or RX rate can go up to the maximum. Next thing is, uh, is about wireless survey. Yeah, so this is the, um, I would say this is the ultimate weapon for wireless troubleshooting. So when I had had the project for uh, wireless optimizations uh, last uh, few weeks ago, so I use this one. So I do okay. So the person asked me, okay, how many access points do we need here? I cannot tell you. I have to do wireless survey. Then based on that, I will propose okay this amount of uh, access point that you can use. Okay, so it's very very useful. If not, and then you just kind of like um, shooting in the dark. You don't really know the problem. Okay, let's change it. Okay, hopefully it works. No. So I have one case study here. So uh, there is a there is a school, uh, and then you know school has rooms, classrooms. So we have three classrooms here: A one o nine, A one o three, A one o four. Then they put access point out of the room. So as you can see on the left hand side, they put the access point on the ceiling. Yeah. And then uh, hopefully they can uh, the signals can go into the classroom with uh, with no problem. Okay. Normally okay you can see the signal. But what is the performance? What about the performance? Well, let's see it here. So the blue color okay, is bad. The red color, so the more red, the more yellow is good. Okay, so that's why when I became there into A03, A04, A09, uh, many people are complaining they cannot access the internet, they cannot. Uh, join the Wi-Fi. The, sig the Wi-Fi signal is very bad. Well, is the proof? Okay. Then we also do the download test. As you can see, the people that uh, sitting close to the access point can get a better um, data rate compared to the uh, to the one that's sitting far away. Okay. So maybe. Wireless is difficult, can it be seen? Well, you can use wireless tools to visualize the spectrum. Brand determines performance, which is not true. Location is much more important than the brand, okay? As a matter if you use Cisco, Rekos, uh, Aruba, Microtech, TP-Link, whatever. Uh, location is much more important. 
One is is complex to get correct understanding. So you need to get correct understanding about how wireless works. Sometimes people do not understand what is DB or decibel. Uh, so SNR means uh, signal to noise ratio. So its ratio it means A per B. But why can we just subtract from uh, this one minus 90 dBm to let's say minus 70 dBm? Why can we just subtract them? Because they don't understand the concept of decibel. Okay. Uh, add more bandwidth, solve everything. No, it's not. Again, it depends on location. If you have 100 megabit per second, but if you put the wireless access point in bad locations, still no, uh, no hard feeling. Okay, still the signal is not that good. We don't need wire. No, it's not. We still need wire because it's much more reliable. Um, compared to the wireless one. Okay, we have question and answer, and then I hope you guys are interested. If uh, you want to come to our training, you can just do so. We have a training in December. Okay, you can uh, um, check uh, our website as well. And then that's it, uh, end of slides. Okay, let's talk about this question here, about the review. I think uh, this is the review. Well, um, because uh, to be honest, uh, testing the point-to-point -point connection is much easier compared to point-to-multipoint because <laughs> because point-to-multipoints you need uh, if you want to simulate that you need to have uh, many people that going to the you know connect to that access point. So we need more than a more many volunteers to check the performance. Well, but I can say uh, I, have, I have one case where uh, RBC, CAP to end performance, uh, and then they, they were accessed by um, uh, 40 people. And uh, yeah, it, it, it went well. Why 40 people? Because yeah, uh, at the time in that room, there are 40 people, and then they are connected to the same access point. Then when I see the registration table, oh okay, we have we have 40 people connected, and then the, all of them can access the internet with no problem. Okay, this answer. Hope that answer the questions. Oh, it's already eight o'clock in Jakarta now. Any other questions? Any other questions? Um, for um, people who is from uh, Spain here, um, do, do you have any questions or uh, are there some clouds on your head? <laughs> you can you can add them here. So the propose for this webinar. So we, well, GLC, um, made the, the the first webinar is from 2010. So this is not our first webinar. First webinar that we made, I still remember up to now when I was in Australia, uh, was uh, the first January, January, yeah, the first of January, 2010. So it's it's a uh, it's a new year, yeah. <laughs> new year, the first day in 2010. So that was the, our first webinar. And then that time we were discussing the Solaris operating system. Okay, so uh, Michael, okay, I uh, hope your answer, I uh, hope your question is answered. Any more questions? Hello. Any more questions? Well, if you want to, if you want to uh, ask a question, you can you can type them here in Indonesia, and then I will discuss in English. Any more questions, please?
Okay, uh, Fabrina, I never did configuration for IP before. Okay, is all the tools for IP of the IP of the in micro degradable board? Is all the tools? Uh, sorry, Adam. Are all tools for IP of stations available in micro degrader board? Well, not directly. Not um, some some of the features you can you can just use it from Winbox, like frequency usage, like the uh, you know alignments. Those features you can just use it uh, directly from Winbox, okay, but uh, uh, some tools like, you know, uh, frequency uh, analyzer, yeah, that one, actually frequency analyzer is kind of, a kind of uh, expensive stuff, you know. So we have in our lab here, I'm, I'm teaching in Telecom University, and then we have frequency analyzer which can analyze which frequency is being used by other access point? That one is quite expensive. But here in Macrotech, you can use it for free as long as we have the router port. But with one condition, you can access it from the Jude client. Okay, does that answer the questions? Okay, I hope so. Okay, any other questions? Okay, I will assume that you only understand the basic of of uh, RF, you know, it's like decibels, like you know, uh, RF fundamental, you know, the decibels, uh, uh, decibel milliwatt, dBm, uh, dBi, dBm is decibel uh, milliwatt, so it's like comparing. Uh, Signal to one milliwatt. Anything else? Ada lagi enggak? Okay, kalau tidak ada, uh, uh, thank you very much for your coming. Uh, I hope you get something from this webinar. At least, uh, you know. Uh, uh, you get you can understand how the webinar. Uh, I sorry, uh, sorry how the wireless works. Okay, um, but the thing here is uh, okay. You you can get a theory, but uh, you need to have more and more practice on uh, configuration. So the theory itself is not enough. I will not say that. Um, okay, you don't need to learn the theory. It's, no, um, if you're 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 working in wireless, you must you must have you must be back up with uh, a good understanding of uh, RF theory. RF means uh, radio frequency theory. So you must you must you must understand. That. Okay. Uh, after you understand the theory, then you need to be uh, you need to master with the. You, you need to master the configuration, so uh, you have to be, you, you need to know, okay, which tool is used to optimize this one, uh, uh, what kind of menu should I click, which button should I push, okay, yeah, that, those things. Okay, so I think uh, it's time for us to say goodbye. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll see um, in the next two weeks. Okay, so if there's no questions and then uh, see you again. And then uh ini pada malu kelihatannya ini ya. ya. Jangan malu ya. Uh, terima kasih banyak and then uh, selamat siang. Ilmu gaib ya, ilmu gaib karena uh, gaib artinya tidak kelihatan, tidak kasat mata ya gaib seperti hantu atau uh, jin atau apa gitu ya itu tidak kasat mata ya seperti wireless. Oke, okay, uh, terima kasih banyak sudah datang. Kita ketemu lagi. Uh, ya saya harap uh, webinar ini berguna sekali uh, ke teman-teman. Thank you very much. Yeah.